I'm excited today to talk about plaids for a couple reasons. I get a lot of questions about them, and I notice in our fabrics, plaids do not sell as well as, even if they're comparable fabrics, do not sell as well as the solids or the prints. So I understand, you know, we're sewing quickly, we're doing things that are whatever, and we're a little bit intimidated by plaids. And so the goal today is to kind of give you some rules about plaids and we are seeing them a lot in our fashions today, a lot. Keep in mind that because the style right now is very feminine, you're seeing a lot of gathers, you're seeing a lot of um, ruffles and all of those things. It's a little bit contradictory to plaids. Plaids are definitely a masculine fabric when it comes to the feminine masculine definitions. And so, but they're still so out there and they're still so appropriate and they're still so flattering and, and they change up our wardrobe completely. So what I want to do is just go through some little good, bad examples, actually bad, good examples for you, and let you just give you some things to think about, and then we're going to show you plaids. All right, so we're going to start with the first one. And this is a gal who's on TV, and, um, you know, I've, I've actually started to tune in often because she dresses terribly, and I don't know who her stylist is, but she needs to be fired. So look at, let's look at this first one. You do not do plaids. On a short ruffle where the plaid can't jive with the ruffle that's an that's a really perfect combination of just clashing fabric and pattern together so you see where the short little sleeve ruffles and plaid they just look horrible next the little ruffle at the bottom of this it's too small to carry off the plaid it's too round to carry off the plaid it's a complete collision of fabric and pattern together and think about it why would I take a curved piece of fabric and put it on a plaid when there's a zillion other fabrics out there to use it's not logical that I try to make those two go together the next one you can see it's a full dress again done in a plaid and if you look at the hem you just see all kinds of collisions between the print of the fabric and the line of the pattern again why would I do this I could do a little plaid top and then make the bottom a solid to match. But to try to do it all in plaid, I just don't understand why it's done. And again, from my perspective, which is patterns, you want simple, clean, straight lines um, when you're doing a plaid. There are some exceptions. This next one I'm gonna show you. And this is by Veronica Beard, and this is not inexpensive. So I particularly wanted to show you this one. It's just, it's wrong everywhere. If you look at so many different levels, to do that type of change with a plaid or even a stripe is just a big mistake. Do the top out of plaid, do the bottom out of a solid, and just marry the two together. But just, you can see your eye is so confused as to where to go or where to land. or And it shouldn't be that way in a garment. Clothing should give us a place to look. It should give us a focal point. And this just causes utter confusion. And that's where it's wrong. If we look at this next one, um, we tried to do a curved princess seam with checks. And again, it just such a collision of fabric and pattern together. There's so many ways that could have been done. I'm going to reference you back to a, a PBS series we did. Billy was on the series and she talked about marrying fabrics. And sometimes when you did that, you did it with what she called a buffer. And we put it up on YouTube because it was so good. And so if you go back to that series where it was Billy was the guest, it's phenomenal the ways she has married fabric over the years. Sometimes so she wouldn't have to match plaids. Sometimes just because she liked the way it looked a little bit better. To have no buffer between when these two fabrics come together is just a, a massive, you know, your eye again, it's just confused as to where to look. Okay, so we've seen enough bad, let's look at good. This blouse, if you look at it carefully, you notice that every place they didn't want to match, and the sleeve is not matched to the body. But I think for a lot of us, we think that's the worst case scenario. Boy, if you don't match that sleeve to that body, you just need to go home. That's just not the case. There's many plaids out there where the sleeves are not matched to the body. If you want to match them, simply put the underarm seam at the same plaid, the notch um, of the sleeve and the armhole at the same place. That's it. That's all you have to do to match them. It takes not that much time to do it, and it will. the rest of the sleeve will follow in place, and it will look really nice. However, I want you to see in this picture that they don't match and then every place they were worried about matching, they use bias and bias is very acceptable. So you notice the front band is biased, the pocket is biased, the collar is biased. 
and, and the sleeve, the, um, the cuff is bias. So any place they had to worry about matching, they just didn't and they just turned it on the bias. And it's a great look. It's really flowing. It's really pretty. The next one um, is just simply beautiful. They took the plaids and they're large plaids and they just made a very simple dress. And in this case, a little shirt dress. Um, it could have had sleeves. You could put a wrap on it like what I have on top of mine to where you don't have to do the sleeves or you can just wear it sleeveless, either way you want to do. The next one, again, notice that the, the bias contrast between the top and the bottom. The next one, again, I thought was really good. Of course, it's Kate Middleton. Kate Middleton does her, her dressers, her, her stylists do nothing wrong. I'm sure it originates from her. She's got impeccable taste, but it also is who she picks and who she selects to dress her. But I, I thought how pretty this was. And if, what I want you to notice on this is there are gathers at the bottom. It's a dropped waist and there are gathers, although they're not gathers, they're pleats. So from a pattern perspective, gathers and pleats are the same exact thing. Whether you choose to gather them or whether you choose to pleat them should depend on the fabric. Plaids would require pleating most of the time, not always because I'm going to completely change it up when I show you this today. But there are cases where you can gather plaids and they're perfectly acceptable. And that's the goal. So in this case, they're pleated in there. The next case is what inspired me to do this. I just love that halter. It's a little bit so you guys can start with a plaid and not be nervous. It's a halter. It's on the bias. So how easy is that and just how much fun is that to do? So today I'm using a fabric 4230. I used two yards. And I'm going to show you where I mixed up the bias and then the solid to kind of give stability and yet not ruin um, the top itself. Sometimes bias, sometimes it gives us instability, but we can always go back and stabilize it either with a seam or with something that's held inside. So pattern 619 is what I chose. It's our halter pattern. Uh, Jessica's favorite halter. It is Peggy's favorite halter. I love the top simply because it's four pieces. It could be two if you wanted it to be, but it's four pieces. It's quick. It's easy. And I don't think halters are, I think halters just should be a part of our wardrobe. I know I've said this before, but I just think they're wonderful. In this particular case, this is a, like an aqua blue, a black, a white, a red. I just love the colors. I chose the white to pull in the bottom. Not that it's my best look, but it's the color that I wanted. And then a black to go over. And I could have easily have done the black slacks and a white little pullover. The little pullover I made is 196. And I did that, the little Cardi, I did that from 4307. A very lightweight black knit, and it just is perfect fabric pattern combination. So what I wanted, as you can see, is this bias front and bias back. So I'm going to walk you through this little layout. Um, pattern 619, fabric is 4230. Use two yards. The first one is when you go to fold that fabric on the bias, and you can see this first photo. You've simply got lines to follow. It couldn't be any easier to get a true bias because you've got lines, you know, horizontally and vertically that that selvage folds up to match. So what you're doing is you're taking the selvage edge, you're folding it in diagonal to, to match the um, stripe that goes from selvage to selvage, okay? Then you're putting on the piece. And because each one took about a yard, that's why I used two yards. So you put the piece on top, make sure it's long enough. If you need it longer or wider, you just continue to fold that piece greater. The next one I did is once I cut the front, I folded up the next piece. I laid that cut piece next to it so I could approximate where to put the piece. The only thing I had to match on here was the side seams. And guess what? Even if they didn't match, I knew I was going to wear a little cardi over it. It just didn't make any difference. So don't really get hung up on that. This is an uneven plaid. What that means is the plaid is not the exact same horizontally as it is vertically. Horizontally, from selvage to selvage, you've got a white line going through it, whereas vertically you do not. So because it's not an even plaid, you're not going to get an exact match at the sides. That's not even possible. All you want to do is get it going the right direction. But again, with a plaid, when you're folding it on the bias, it's so easy to line those lines up that you know that bias is going to actually be true. Sometimes when you fold a piece of fabric, you're not sure if you've got a 90 degree angle and that's what I want you to be sure of. So you can lay the other piece on there, get a close approximation as to where it is, and then move on down. What I did is I had some pieces at the end left over, and I folded those and used a straight of grain, 
and I folded my little halter pieces inside. And I love a halter inside for um, for a a halter inside. What I say, I love a bra cup inside on a halter. I, I think it has a tendency to just lay better and and give a little more body to all of it. And so I prefer to use it. It has nothing to do with whether to me you're wearing a bra or not. I can wear a bra under this. Again, I would, I'm not going to wear the halter by itself. So I knew um, I could put a bra underneath if I wanted. It, it wasn't any deciding factor. I just used the bra inside to stabilize the bias and to give me another layer over where, you know, I was going to be. All of this, nothing gaps. You know, you can obviously, the cup sizing is built into the gathers here at the neckline, but it's a case where you see soft gathers and plaids instead of, I mean, soft gathers with plaids instead of pleats, but it's completely acceptable and it looks great. All right, and then the last thing I wanna show you, so these were put straight grain. The last thing I wanna show you is in a case like a halter, when you look at the front and back pieces of this particular pattern, not a lot of difference between them, except that the back piece is wider. It covers more skin in the back. The front piece is narrower, obviously, based on our bodies. So um, every time you go to put this halter on, you could say, okay, this is wider, but it's gathered. This is wider, this is narrower, and you could check all that. Easy to just put on a label. So this is a great case where a label is <laughs> really serves a purpose and it really helps you get dressed correctly, make sure it's not on backwards. And then in the middle of the restaurant, you say, uh oh, I think I, it doesn't feel right. And so um, anyway, it was just to facilitate. So we put a label on at the end. So the goal is happy sewing with plaids. And I really hope you do venture out. We've got some wonderful plaids. I'm gonna put up some new ones so that you have a fresh supply of spring plaids. And they're amazing. There's a fabric that is for yoga pants. It stretches in both directions. It'd be perfect for a pair of yoga pants. And you know what plaid does, especially in a pair of pants, it really elevates it to where it looks so much fancier, dressier, whatever the occasion is. Anyway, I hope you embrace those plaids. Um, and have a wonderful sewing. They're just fun. They're a little different. They cause us to think a little more, but they're great. Again, happy sewing.